Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about reading and recording time using an analog clock face. So an analog clock face is a face just like the one on the screen right now that has the numbers 1 to 12 around the outside and quite often has small marks just around between each of those numbers like this. So most analog clock faces will have two or sometimes three hands. Um, the two most important ones we're going to talk about today are the minute hand and the hour hand and we can tell those apart by their length. So we'll start with the hour hand. The hour hand is usually the shortest hand on the clock and often it will point to the larger numbers that are written around the edge of the clock. So I've just put one onto my clock. I've put it to pointing at the three. So that would be where it would be at three o'clock. That would be where it would be at four o'clock. The other hand that you'll get on the clock face is often longer and sometimes thinner too. And that is the minute hand. Now you'll often find that if you have those markings around the outside of the clock, you'll find that the, the minute hand will actually point at those small markings and actually go straight through the big numbers that are written on the clock. As you can see here, it goes through the 12. So this one is indicating the minutes that have passed. So this hand will move around one of those tiny spaces every one minute, or it'll move around between each of the larger numbers every five minutes, which means that it will do an entire lap of the clock once every hour. So currently my clock face is showing four o'clock. Now the third hand you'll sometimes see is uh, the second hand. Often it's skinnier and red and this is the hand that is is moving constantly almost uh, and this one will tick around the clock once every minute. So every time it moves across one of those little markings that is one second past which means that a whole minute is 60 seconds all the way around. I'm not going to talk about that one too much today because we don't really need to worry about that. So I'm just going to delete that from the screen. OK, so the minute hand will do one complete turn of the clock every hour. However, the hour hand will only do one complete turn of the clock every 12 hours. So you'll often find that this hand barely you barely see it move, but it will move a little bit every hour. What you need to be conscious of is as the minute hand moves around the clock, sorry about that, as the minute hand moves around the clock, the hour hand doesn't stay stationary. This hand will slowly be moving between the, the larger numbers. So between four and five o'clock, it will tick from the four to the five, but it will take a whole hour to travel that distance. But you'll find that as the hour goes by, it will gradually move around. So at, at 10 past four, which is showing on the clock right now, it will probably be around about a sixth of the way around between the four and the five. And as this hand ticks around more, moving into the whole thing again, as this hand ticks around more, so we get to 25 past four, this hand will have probably ticked closer to halfway. And then as we get further around, as we get to now 4.45, or as most of us would say, quarter to five, the, the hour hand will now be almost pointing at the six. It'll be three quarters of the way there. And this is often where we get some confusion when we're reading the time, because it looks like it's almost pointing at the five, but it's important to note that it hasn't yet reached the five. So we're still at the point where it's on its way to the five. So we would say that it is a quarter of the way around the clock, to five o'clock or we would say that it's three quarters of the way past the four so we have to be thinking what numbers have we passed and what are we on the way to and that will help us to read the time more effectively it's really important that when we're drawing the clock faces and showing times on the clock face that we show the movement in that hour hand at least somewhat if we're starting to show the time at quarter two but we haven't moved the hour hand then that actually looks more like quarter to four than it does quarter to five. So we must be conscious that this hand is moving and is on its way there. That's what we're going to be looking for. So every time this hand ticks around between, oops, done it again, move it again. Every time this hand ticks around between from one number to the next, that's five minutes of movement. So we go from this beginning, that's, this would be o'clock, and I'm not going to worry about moving this hand for this demonstration, but remember this would be moving all the way through the hour. So that would be five o'clock. Now we've gone to one, that's five past. 
So you can see it's gone one, two, three, four, five, ten past, quarter past. And this is where our five times table comes in handy because we can see that quarter past is 15 minutes past, three fives are 15, four fives are 20, five fives are 25 past, six fives are 30 or half an hour, seven fives are 35, eight fives are 40, nine fives are 45. So that would be that, that would be 5.45, remember this would have moved by now, it would be on its way around to there, and 50, 55, and we don't say 60, now we would be at the next o'clock, we're back to zero, and that would be six o'clock. Okay, so as you're doing your work this week on time, please think about the hand lengths, make sure they're clearly different. Okay, remember the hour hand points at the big numbers, the minute hand points at the edge of the clock, the markings around the edge you might not have them but i want you to imagine that they're there and remember this one will point to the edge of the clock this one will point to the numbers the hour hand points to the numbers the minute hand points to the edge try and get that right we'll be looking out for that as we're marking your work this week thanks guys have a great week look forward to seeing you in school on your day